Well, hello, my name's Wynne Roberts and I'm here sitting on my favourite beach over on the Gower Peninsula. So this place has been a very important part of the journey I've had since I was diagnosed with bowel cancer. Because on the week that I had my diagnosis, I came on to this, my favourite beach. I walked just down there and I stamped my feet on the ground and I said, I will be back. And as you can see, I am back. After two and a half years of a journey, not just with the cancer, but also with COVID, of course, as well. I think it was on this beach that I actually realized that there was something was wrong because I ha kept having to go off to the loo. But unfortunately, I must say that was about three and a half or more years ago when that happened. And I sat on it for far too long and did nothing about it. Coming up with excuses, like I was having problems and it due to maybe intolerance to what I was eating or something. Everything apart from thinking, well, this could be cancer. Eventually, I did do something about it and I went to see my GP and my GP wasn't that concerned but some of the symptoms I had were definitely symptoms I now know are to do with bowel cancer. My stools had blood in it and that happened for I think at least a year and a half before my diagnosis. I was going to the toilet far more regularly and also I was a bit constipated as well. The doctor did send me to a specialist. And October 2019, I went for my colonoscopy. It only took him a couple of minutes. And then they said, we think that you have cancer. And then a couple of days later, I was here standing on this beach saying, I will be back. Because I knew I had a lot of treatment ahead of me. They told me that it was operable, and that I needed a lot of treatment as well. So straight after I came back from here, I then started on the course of chemotherapy and radiotherapy from middle of October right through to the new year. And that was before I had my operation because they wanted to get the tumor to go down a bit in size to make it safer for them to be able to get the tumor out. I found the chemo radiotherapy okay. It wasn't too difficult. Um, I got very tired, but I did it. You know, and uh, the funny thing about it was right at the end of my chemo radiotherapy, I was I was blessed by Her Majesty the Queen with receiving the British Empire Medal for something else I do. And so I was on the television, on 24 hour news and everything, but nobody let out the secret that I was actually living with cancer at that point, because I wasn't ready to tell the world beyond the people around me. And then, of course, January, February, March, they told me, right, you can gather your strength after your chemo and radiotherapy, and then hopefully, beginning of April, we get you in for an operation. Unfortunately, COVID came, and that meant that I had to keep really, really, really um, isolated. Then my operation was canceled in April due to COVID, because they wanted to make sure there was a safe environment for me. And then in May, I actually got to go in to have my operation and they told me that I would need a stoma bag um, but they didn't tell me whether it was going to be permanent or temporary. I then got a call and I went in beginning of May and unfortunately things didn't quite work out the way that it should because I ended up being in hospital for the whole month and the reason for that was because the op was fine, but then the, my bowels wouldn't start back up again. So I had to be aspirated and uh, given all manual drugs to see whether my bowels would start moving again. Eventually, three and a half weeks later, it did. It was very difficult as well during that period because you weren't able to see anybody. You had no visitors. All the staff were wearing masks. I think it's the longest period I've been in isolation ever. But eventually I got to go back home and then to begin, one, to get used to having the stoma bag, which I must admit mine was not easy. As the doctor even said, you've got the most stubborn stoma I've ever seen. I think it worked for MI5 because you couldn't see it. It didn't jut out, it had gone back in again a little bit. The stoma bag was, was hard for me because it kept on leaking. 
sometimes two, sometimes three, four times a day. And therefore, I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't doing anything. But people tried their best, and especially part of my work is as a singer and an entertainer. And luckily, the BBC and S4C, Channel 4 here in Wales, they came and they decided to turn bits of my garage into a studio. And so I did a lot of stuff. Um, online for radio and for TV, but did it all within the garage, which again gave me a sense that I was accomplishing something during my time uh, that I was suffering with the effects of the chemotherapy, the operation, and also getting used to the most stubborn stoma in the world. After two months post op, I then started a course of six months chemotherapy, and because they wanted to make perfectly sure that they'd got everything, and in I think May or June last year, I went in to have my stoma taken away. I used to say, say to people that I am now a Dyson and bagless. The bag has been taken away. Then came the period then of getting used to being back into some form of normality. And in fact, it's worked really well. My energy came back um, after the chemo and the effects of the operation. My innards began to work quite normally really a few problems along the way but um it's been it's been okay and now i'm back in work i'm working outside i'm now singing and doing concerts and all manner of things so it's been a long journey a journey from when i started here on this beach and as you can see a journey where i'm back on this beach and one thing i did when i came here back again and i said I've come home, I'm here. Um, I collected some stones and shells and some sand and I've made, using a bowl, I've made a place with sand, with shells and with a candle where I can remind myself of the journey which I have been on and how this place on the Gower Peninsula helped me because when I was in hospital for the whole month, every night, when everything was quiet, I'd put on a video on YouTube of the seashore with the sea crashing in and the sound of seagulls and so on. And that allowed me to relax, it allowed me to sleep eventually. And it also reminded me of what I've got waiting for me when everything was over and I was back out in the world again. So I'm here today to give thanks to the beach once again. And I hope that your journey will go well, but please do not do what I did. All the indicators were there and I did nothing about it. But thank goodness it wasn't too late.